Hey everybody, it's Tim Bod here at the TTL Makerspace. Today we're going to be programming the Circuit Playground Express by Adafruit. We're going to be taking data from the built-in temperature sensor, feeding it to the handy colored LED lights here, uh, in order to create a smart cooler monitor that will make sure that our beverages in here stay nice and cold. <laughs> Now, the Circuit Playground Express is a great way to get into programming and hardware. One of the big advantages of the CPX, as it's called, is that it can be programmed with both C and Python. The advantage of Python is that there's no compiling step. This means that you can work very fast, makes it very good for rapid prototyping, which is what we're going to be doing today. <laughs> All right, let's head up our board. The first thing we're going to do is plug it in so that it has power. We're going to see that it lights up. In the very center of the board is a small button that we can use to reset the hardware. This is going to clear out any code that is already on the board so we can start programming fresh. So we're just going to go ahead and press that in twice. We'll see it blink. We get the green LED lights. Now we're ready to start coding. So let's jump onto the computer and the first thing we're going to do is go by the Adafruit website. Okay, here we are on the CircuitPython website and we're in the download section. And we can see right here we can uh, look for the specific device that we're working with. In our case, it's the Circuit Playground Express. So we'll select that one. And it's going to take us to the specific download for the Circuit Playground Express. You can see right on over here, we're at version 7.2.5. And we've got a link to a UF2 file that we can download. This is a very special file. This is exactly what we need to flash the board and tell it that we want to program in Python. So we'll click and we'll start the download. Save it into here. It's not too large. The UF2 file is uh, pretty small, so we'll have this pretty quickly. And we can see there it is, uh, 496K right here. And using this is actually very simple. Over here on the left, uh, because I'm working in Ubuntu and I've got my icons docked on the left, you can see that I've got a drive which is currently called C Play Boot. I'm going to bring that up and inside of here, you can see it's got this default UF2 file. When we drag this file over, we're going to be overwriting that. The hardware itself is going to uh, recognize what we've done and uh, automatically reassign this to be a different drive set up for coding in Python. It's pretty cool. Watch this. We'll just drag it on over, and in a second, we hear the little icon, we hear the little sound. Now when we do this, we should see the lights blink on the board, and on our desktop, we're gonna see a new drive called CircuitPy. This tells us that we're ready to start coding. So this is where we can run into a problem if we're not familiar with the way that the CircuitPython board works. Uh, CircuitPython is wonderful for its ability to do what's called just-in-time compilation or JIT compilation. It lets us work really fast, but in order to use it, we need to have a code editor that saves the entire file that we are coding on. And you see, in the background, a lot of code editors don't do that. They just save the section that you've been working on they update the file. We need the entire file to be rewritten or it won't be recognized as a change by CircuitPython. You can even corrupt your board by doing this. We don't want to do that. In this case, we're going to be using the MU editor, which is the editor that is recommended by Adafruit. It's going to work just great for this. Okay, we are back and we are ready to rock. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the MU code editor. And uh, so to install that, I took the easy way and I went to the uh, Snap installer. If you are working on Ubuntu Linux, uh, it's using Snaps for managing installed software. And I just went to uh, the Explore and uh, I looked for the MU editor, just like that. And it'll take a second and it'll search for mu or mu. And there it is right there. That's, that's the icon you're looking for, a Python editor for beginner programmers. And you can see that I've already got it installed. Now we could jump right into mu and we could start coding this up from scratch. 
but there's a way that we can uh, give ourselves a bit of a break by using some of the code libraries that are provided by Adafruit. Adafruit does a really good job of supporting all of the hardware products that they put out. And uh, if we head back into circuitpython.org and we go to slash libraries, you're gonna find a bundle right here. And you can see bundle for version 7.x. This is why it's important that we looked at the version of CircuitPython that we were installing in the earlier step. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the zip file by doing a quick download. Save it into my CircuitPython folder on my desktop. And uh, if we go ahead and take a look at that, uh, here it is right here. It's a zip and uh, we can go ahead and unzip that. We're gonna open it with the archive manager. And the reason why we are unzipping it is uh, right here, let's go ahead and extract it. Here we go. There we are. Yeah, and the reason why we're uh, unzipping that is because if you look inside, you can see that uh, we've got a lib folder uh, very similar to the folder that is on our board itself. So let's, uh, so for example, if we bring this up, you can see we've got a lib folder right here. Uh, but you're not going to be able to just copy the entire lib folder right over. And the reason for that is that Adafruit provides uh, in this zip all of the actual source files in folders here. Uh, so instead, what we're going, uh, that's going to be too large for the storage of this board. And it's really not necessary. So instead, what we can do is copy the individual MPY files, which are binary, uh, compiled binary versions of the code archives that, uh, that Adafruit provides. Uh, now with this, we can go ahead and select them all. So we'll just grab all of the MPY files, just like this. And we're just gonna drag them on over into the lib folder just like this. Now I've already done it, so uh, it's asking if I wanna replace them. I don't really need to, so I'm just gonna cancel out of it. Um, but uh, the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to access some of the excellent code provided uh, by Adafruit, uh, specifically for reading our temperature settings and for updating the colored LEDs on the board. So once you've done that, you're gonna be pretty much ready to go you'll be able to bring up your MU code editor. And the first time that you do this, it's actually gonna ask you if you wanna work with your Circuit Playground board, you just hit yes, and it will automatically load up the code.py file that is in here. And now we're ready to start coding in Python. Now keep in mind, as you work in this file and uh, it saves the file to the board, it is automatically going to run. So you may see the board do some funny things initially, um, but this is good. This is gonna allow us to actually iterate very quickly. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is the uh, imports that we need for this job. So the first thing I'm going to import is time. And that's not coming from the Adafruit uh, Circuit Playground code. Uh, that's part of the board itself. Uh, to go along with that, we're going to import from Adafruit Circuit Playground import CP. And that is the main code that we're going to use in this project here. Now to test it out, we can write, uh, let, let's write something to the colored LEDs. When this first starts up, I wanna see those uh, LEDs light up so that I know that this uh, project is working. So I'm gonna say CP pixels fill, and I'm gonna say, turn them all red. I'm gonna say, uh, so using RGB values, I'm gonna say 50 comma zero comma zero. And so that's our red, green, and blue. Um, we're basically saying 
fill all the lights with red color. Okay, now uh, we need to actually write some of our default values here. So let's make a little note for ourselves. We're going to say set defaults. And the first thing we're going to say is, you know, is, is, this, is the temperature in the danger zone? And we're going to assume that it starts off not in the danger zone. So we'll say danger equals false. If you haven't worked with Python before, uh, you should know that Python is a dynamically typed language. Uh, so we don't have to specifically state that danger is a Boolean variable. It will pick it up from the value that we provided. Um, if that means nothing to you, then uh, let's just keep moving along. And we'll make another variable here. Uh, and this we're going to use for recording the temperature in Celsius, which I kind of prefer. But we'll also record the temperature in Fahrenheit. And we'll give those default values of zero because we're going to go ahead and, and read the temperatures. Now, since we're going to be continuously reading the temperatures, it kind of makes sense to make a function. And the way that we do that in Python is with def or, de or define, right? The other thing to know about Python is that uh, spacing is very important. So you see how the MU code editor has automatically put a space here? And this is because we're now working inside of the function. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, declare a global for our temperature Celsius. And uh, we'll do the same thing for our temperature Fahrenheit, just like that. And we'll get our first reading. We'll say uh, temperature Celsius equals CP. So now we're accessing that Adafruit library temperature. And that's all there is to it because by, by default, it does the readings in Celsius, but we can also get it in Fahrenheit if we do a little small conversion where we say, you know, give us the, give us the temperature in, in Celsius, times it by nine, divide by five, and add 32, which is just a little bit of math to convert uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now we're ready to get into writing our uh, main loop here. So let's put a little note for ourselves. We'll say this is the main loop. And a very common way of creating the main loop in Python is to use the good old while true. This is just a short form for making a loop here. So the first thing we're going to do is say call that read temperature function, just like that. All right. Now, because uh, right up here, we declared uh, this variable as global. It means that uh, even though it's been declared here on the root uh, and then changed here in the scope of the function, we will actually be able to access it inside of our root level where the uh, while true loop resides here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's start off by printing it out. It's gonna say print. Temperature is, and then we'll use some uh, stand ins here. Just like that. And we're using a little short form here for our string concatenation. Temp C and temp F. Might as well use the handy little code hinting, just like that. Uh, and this is pretty much good to go. Now we don't want this spitting out at the maximum speed of the processor. Uh, let's space it out by using the other library we brought in the time library as a function called sleep. And we'll tell it to uh, sleep for a second in between readings here. Uh, now we'll go ahead and save this. It'll update on the board. And uh, to see this actually working, uh, we can bring up the serial monitor right here. 
And anything that we're printing out will get printed out to the serial monitor. So we can see uh, we're hanging out at a, a 26.8 degrees Celsius, very comfortable temperature. So that looks pretty good. So let's close the serial monitor and let's fill out uh, some of the logic of our little sensor here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the temperature Celsius is less than 30 degrees and the temperature Celsius is greater than, say, 20, um, greater than 20, just like that. Uh, so this is basically going to be our uh, room temperature. So we'll say, you know, let's fill the pixels with a nice green temperature to indicate that. So 0, 50, 0. That's going to fill it entirely with green, just like that. Uh, we can go a little further. Let's do our next condition here, and we're going to say if the temperature is uh, say less than 20, then um, we'll fill it with blue because blue is a nice chill temperature. So pixels fill and uh, it'll be zero for the red, zero for the green, 50 for the blue. Something like that. And then we've got our final temp temperature. And this is an important one because this is, uh, this is the danger zone. So we're going to say if the temperature, uh, say, goes more than 30 degrees, let's make them all red. And that will be our, our warning that this food is no bueno or this uh, beverage is unpleasantly warm. And so we're gonna say 50 for the red, nothing for the green, nothing for the blue, just like that. Now, as it is, this code will work. And you know, if we go ahead and save it, uh, we're probably gonna see that green condition light up, right? Because uh, we're somewhere between uh, 30 and 20 degrees Celsius. Now, as the day goes on, if our cooler warms up to a point that uh, the uh, temperature goes over 30 and we're in the danger zone, it is going to fill up the pixels with the red. But the problem is, like, let's say uh, the temperature drops again overnight. Well, as soon as the temperature drops back down again, it's going to go back to the chilled condition and show blue, even though... Uh, you know, we've, we've crossed the danger zone. We've probably got some bacteria or something going on in there. So we're going to need a little bit more here. Now, you'll notice that we created a variable we haven't used yet, which is called danger, and we've set it to false. So let's say that if the temperature uh, does go too high, we're going to set danger equal to true. And uh, you have to capitalize this in, uh, in Python. Okay. And uh, what we can do up here is make sure that if we dip into the danger zone, it will never show refrigerated and it will never show room temperature again. That's, that's what we want. If it hits the danger zone, we want it to always show red so we know when we open up our cooler. So to do that... Let's do a, another little check inside of here where we're checking for the temperature. We can also say and danger hard equals, oops, sorry, hard equals false, right? So only if there is no danger going on will it ever go back to green. And we can do the same thing down here in the chill condition. We'll just say and danger equals false, just like that. 
And this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and give it a save. Uh, we can bring up our serial monitor again. And if we are looking in our fridge, uh, you know, once we hit the uh, nice chill zone, uh, we should see the lights turn to blue and it indicates that everything is good. Uh, and it can move back and forth between the green and the blue without any problem. But if it ever dips into the danger zone and it hits red, it's going to stay on red. And so we can be, you know, careful with our food selection here. All right, I think we got it. At this point, our application is functional. We can see from the green that we're at a comfortable room temperature. But what do we want for a chill temperature? For this, why don't we get the data right from the refrigerator? Let's go. Looking at the data streaming in from the refrigerator to our serial monitor, we'll be able to adjust our values to ensure the chill temperature that we want. At this point, we've got a working unit. We could just put this right in here and we're ready for a day at the beach. It would let us know if we're going to eat dodgy food or even worse, warm beer. But it's probably a bad idea to just put a circuit right into an environment where there can be liquid sloshing around. So in our next video, we're going to get Kyle in to work on a custom enclosure. He's going to be 3D printing. And if you're into design, you're definitely going to want to check out that video as well.